So I believe it's about that time now to uh, move along. Yeah, yeah, ish. All right, cool. Ish. All right, all right. Oh, okay. Should we do something? It's a big old pile of ish. So now what? Well, the uh, we got the the jazzy thing. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the intro to that spring. Yeah. That's my intro. Should we do that? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> is it is it intro time over there? Are we good? <laughs> yes. All right. Go for it. Uh, that starts. Guys, start walking, boy. from 30 hour day right now, now. <laughs> what this is my thing go ahead I'm, you go ahead yeah you just stand there what, what? he's he's gonna do it too okay you stand just take a step to the side okay I'm Cam Achaeus. this is 30 oh jeez. okay Dr. Hey. Normal would like hey. to be introduced as oh, well okay hey, dude. All right. I was gonna. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Should I give you the bear hug, like you yeah. gave me in our publicity shot? I was gonna introduce the we, band. I need the mic. I was gonna. Oh. The mic was. Okay, you can band. introduce the band. Yeah. Right, Doc Normal here. How you Let's doing? not fight. You're a ham. I know. And you're a ham. What did I do? Uh, this is my time to be a ham. Right. Okay. The Watch those numbers plummet. <laughs> Get in here. No, that's okay. 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 This is target for tomorrow and the horns of destruction. <laughs> They have been with us all night. They started playing around seven-ish, in the ish, ish time. We've been sweating them under hot lights. I don't think we fed them. Yeah, we got some spaghetti. Yeah, we got those. If you didn't feed us, then we stole your food. Oh, good. I'm glad we fed you. So I'm going to pass this around. I'm going to start over here because you're closest and say hello. And I know that you guys may have already done a little introduction period, but I think there should be more. So introduce yourself. All right, uh, my name is Jason Lusk. I'm the bass player for Target for Tomorrow. I'm having a great time here so far. I really like what you guys are doing. Thank you, Jason. Woo! I'm uh, Aaron Broussard, and uh, I do the, the singing and the guitaring in our band. And, guitaring, um, is that a technical? It can be. Okay, I'm going to go with be. guitaring as a technical yeah, term. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just really glad that uh, we got invited out to this. This is a killer broadcast you guys got going on, so Thank we appreciate you. it. Right. Oh, this is Charlie Awesome. My, <laughs> my name is, that's my Twitter name, <laughs> Charlie Awesome. Um, I'm the drummer, and they did feed us, because if they didn't, I'd have been comatose by now. Probably. That's so, fair. Yeah. I All lost right. my voice last night at the Blazers game. Woo! Woo! Just want to say that one. Hey, uh, my name is Michael Bodie, and I play saxophone, and um, also one of the songwriters, but really... We're kind of all songwriters because we just jam and make <laughs> make awesome music. So there we go. All right. Uh, I'm Brian Fitzsimmons. You you may have seen me getting molested by the PDX FM people. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. 
I play the <laughs> trumpet, and uh, this is a great event, and I'm really glad that we could be involved. All right. I'm Orrin Clark. I do all the uh, the tromboning. That's also a <laughs> technical, technical term. term. Oh yeah, you, what you guys are doing here is great. Thank you. Thank you. What you guys are doing is great. Um, I really can't thank you guys enough for joining us. Are you guys going to stick around for just a tiny bit longer? Yeah. 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 Do you, you want to take that? Okay. Oh, oh, is it me now? Do you want it to talk? All right. You go ahead, sweetie. So we're really happy. Hey. So we're, we're really happy to have these guys. And so as we transition over to the stage, that's, we're going to ask to do yet to do. another. That's our cue to go yeah. over wonderful, here. Wonderful, full gonna walk tune. And uh, and then we'll be back uh, for more fun okay. with Target for tomorrow. Um, so I'm out of here. Wait. Hey, Megan. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Right now. Right now. All right. Okay, so. Here we go to the show.
Oh my gosh, you guys. Once again, that was Target for Tomorrow. And awesome. the horns of destruction. They were awesome just when they were doing sound check. I know. They've been great all night. And very patient. Yes. And very not nice. not quite as crazy as us, because you know, I don't think they're planning on staying up for all 30 hours, but that's okay. <laughs> they're young. They should stay up I know. Us. They're young, vibrant men. They should be like, hey, I can do this thing. It's cool. But no. They think we're stupid. It's cool. It's that's all right. good. That's cool. It's okay. Whatever. So, I think maybe we'll get on to the show part of the show, and we'll talk to Marie Dethridge and Amy Sample Ward, who were so kind to join us. But before we go any further... <laughs> I have a time. Yay, fudge! Because Marie, how did, how did we determine that I needed fudge? <laughs> how didn't you determine that? <laughs> it was about the 30 hours. It was yeah. like thinking of ways to help you stay awake. Yeah. This is going to do it. Oh. I'm going to break one of Dr. Normal's big rules. Of eating. And I'm going to eat on camera because I can. It will be worth it. Holy goodness. <laughs> Rick? <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's all for mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Marie? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us some things while I eat this fudge? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the topic, does that matter or? It does. Okay. You can talk about the fudge. I can talk about, mm -hmm. I can, I, you I can talk about the fudge. I can tell I you just, the recipe. I just would like you to eat, or I would like you to talk okay, so that talk. I may okay. eat this. Yeah. Well, I can talk about why I'm here. Yep. Please do. Okay. Please do. Um, well, I'm here because one of the charities that you're supporting is Free, Free Geek. Geek, which is very near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. because my son actually volunteers there every single day it's open, mm -hmm. um, which is really actually pretty amazing given what it takes for him to get there because he was born 30 and a half years ago with spina bifida and he's paralyzed from like the armpits down mm -hmm. and all the things that go with that and he uh, you know, there was a moment in high school when I had to go take a book to him or something at school that he had forgotten, mm -hmm. and it was during lunchtime, and I went into the cafeteria and looked around in this, like, crazy mass of teeming teenagers, and I saw him, and he was sitting at a table all by himself. And, you know, I had, like, worked all his life to try to prevent that kind of thing from happening, yeah. and then it was this realization of, like, wow, you know, the world just might not be able to handle people that are that different. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, free geek because it's like um, a second home for him. He's really accepted there. Mm -hmm. He's loved there. He feels he belongs there. And I wasn't really sure that he would ever find a place outside home, you yeah. know, to do that. So, uh, you know, it's, it has a very special place in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. So well, and I mean, Murray, you have been instrumental in helping to pull this whole thing off. Quite frankly, I mean, so you've, you've given us so much help and support throughout the entire event that um, it's been really, really good to have you working for us. And we can't, we can't say thank you enough for helping us with the 30-hour day stuff. Everybody here, you should know that <clears throat> even though you weren't cognizant of it. <laughs> Rick especially, and, yeah, and I too have been talking with Marie, and she's been getting things done, and like pulling little puppet master strings. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, pulling little puppet master strings to get things going so that we could pull this entire thing off. Yep, yep. So, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, so, I, and very I really, much. you know, did very little. <laughs> <laughs> you did enough to make us very happy. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, it's just so exciting. I work at a foundation, mm -hmm. so we see a whole lot of uh, nonprofit work and efforts to support nonprofits. And um, this one really caught my attention, you know, and it was because I think it was just sort of unlikely, you know. Um, you guys don't work in the nonprofit world, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of nonprofits feel that. People outside that nonprofit realm really just don't know what nonprofits do. And seriously, if nonprofits close down, everything would the close down, would essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, being at a foundation and seeing new, really innovative and creative ideas and people like you being involved is really inspiring. So, I think. Uh, 
You know, it seems like because of social media and so forth, there's really going to be a whole new ch uh, opportunities in fundraising, and I think you guys have really tapped into that, mm -hmm. and I'd really like to see a lot more of it. So I'm really happy to support it. Thank We're working you. on it. Someone else who's working on it. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi. You've been awfully quiet over there. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to say hi to the folks at home? Hi. To Amy, tell us what it is that you have been doing. Um, well, I used to have the great pleasure of working at Meyer mm -hmm. with Marie, um, but now I work with a nonprofit called Net Squared. So we're focused specifically on using social technologies for social good, um, both for like registered traditional nonprofits and individuals that have ideas to do things to change the world. Um, so we do a lot of community work around the world and have monthly events that a lot of people I know here have gone to in Portland called Net Tuesdays. Um, and we have those now in 60 cities around the world every month. Wow. Um, but then we also do innovation challenges and fund new technology projects um, that help often developing countries where the, you need to create an innovative approach to using technology to, for um, adoption. So how did you get into this realm? Uh, I kind of only know this realm. Yeah. <laughs> My, I went to college and majored in new media mm -hmm. and worked in nonprofits as a college student when you know, like Facebook was only for college kids. And I'd be working for a nonprofit and I was like, wow, your audience is younger people. I will put you in Facebook <laughs> where you're not allowed to be because you're not in college, you know? Mm -hmm. And really saw how um, how open that created the space to people that weren't, as Marie said, like weren't aware traditionally of what nonprofits did, able to see the service they used was tied to a nonprofit or resources they used were tied to a nonprofit because they were accessing them online in their social spaces. Um, so since then, I've just continued to do it. So, what do you guys think is the barrier that keeps people from being aware of not only what's going on within nonprofits, but just, I mean, it just goes over so many people's heads. They don't realize how much of the world wouldn't be able to survive. Mm -hmm. hmm, I think, you know. Is it just easy to overlook something if you don't have to? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the people that I know who are involved in nonprofits um, usually begin, come in it in the first place because they personally someone in their family or someone they know experienced something that then, you know, a nonprofit was helpful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think, you know, we, we don't tell those stories enough. You know, we sort of, um, you know, it, it, it feels like the nonprofit side isn't really telling the stories enough. Yep. And, you know, uh, it takes sort of stopping and listening mm -hmm. and paying attention and um, you know that's one thing that I think both Amy and I are really uh, that's really a big part of our motivation mm -hmm. yeah I mean as far as the storytelling goes I think a lot of nonprofits um, don't tell stories because they don't think they're their stories to tell mm -hmm. because they aren't the ones getting served they're the ones doing the serving but they also aren't proactively creating opportunities for those people they're serving to tell their story on their platform mm -hmm. and, and advocate for them. Um, because they don't, a lot of nonprofits I've worked with have said like, well, it feels like we're using them if we ask them to like tout That's how helpful we were. Like, you know, it looks like we're, we're using these they're, the they're nonprofits, but they're using them to exactly. help mm -hmm. more people. Right, so they don't, they don't encourage it, but people want, you know? Yeah. Blaine mm -hmm. loves for geek. He would love mm -hmm. to tell that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, it's not using it. It's giving them the showcase instead of right. you. Yeah. And you know, I think um, even I think when I look at myself, even in my family, when I when I was caring for my son as a single parent, you know, I didn't really tell people about our struggles. Mm -hmm. I because you know maybe. You know, I didn't really want to like admit that I was in a situation where I was having to carry my son up and down the stairs when he was 16 years old mm -hmm. because we didn't have a bathroom on the first floor. 
And so, you know, I think parents really kind of blame themselves and think, you know, that's some sort of failing of mine and the rest of the world really doesn't want to know about it. And I think finally I overcame that and then, um, you know, was able to like, you know, write, even in my blog now, mm -hmm. yeah. I write things about my son. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it can be, it can feel very isolating. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that things like this and it is really a perfect way to bring those two worlds together. Because, I mean, it's not two worlds. No, yeah. it's not. Right. And, you know, at any moment, any one of the people not in the nonprofit world could find themselves, you know, in need of nonprofit. Well, and I think we've been lucky to, um, you know, apart from the amazing production staff that we have that we really, really couldn't find yeah. off the shelf. Yay, production. Wow. But a lot of the stuff we're using to manage the, the events, like mm -hmm. the donations and mm -hmm. like Network for Good and causes mm -hmm. and stuff that you set us up, that's something that are, before there was a huge barrier to entry there. And right. now it's mm -hmm. accessible not only to the nonprofits, but anybody who wants right. to try and raise money for yeah. a nonprofit. And that's a, that's a huge change yeah. in the world of fundraising to empower anybody to go out right. and, and earn money for a yeah. nonprofit they want to support. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting to see that change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coming because of you know something that people think of as kind of what did you eat for lunch today? You know, yeah. like it, it, that's making a huge change. There's yeah. a fair amount of that too. But yeah. I, I, I do struggle, tweet when I eat for lunch. I think I the struggle then is to help educate nonprofits about how, yes, individuals are out there campaigning or raising money yeah. on their behalf, but you need to find them and make sure that you're thanking those people or giving them the tools they need. Give them your logo, give them your missions, you know, yeah. give them whatever so that they feel like you know they're campaigning for you or raising money for you and that you appreciate it. and ask the people that donate to connect with you and you know because yep. um, it's just a totally different way than sending out a postcard every year <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> is it that some of the nonprofits just aren't they don't have the resources to have a social media person that can help them manage that and help them engage the people that want to help yeah. them I, I think that they don't have a social media person but I also think that they don't realize everyone on the staff yeah. should be involved that yeah. Yeah. it isn't the social media officer's right. job, right. you know, both the fundraiser and the communications person and the volunteer coordinator should all be in Facebook, mm -hmm. if that's where your audience is, you know? Yeah. Um, otherwise, it'll, every conversation you have in that space will be about fundraising, if you're in the fundraising department, right. you know? And right. sometimes yeah. people want to volunteer for you, or sometimes they want to be like, I like you, and that's all I want, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's all okay, nice but right. it means that the whole organization needs to have some contact there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, nonprofits, especially over the past year in the recession, the demand for their services has just really increased. Mm -hmm. And uh, foundation grant support and individual do donations and mm -hmm. government funding or whatever has gone down. So it's like this horrible sort of catch-22. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so catch yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of nonprofits, I think, when they hear about social media or those kinds of opportunities, they think, you know, I'm already so busy. Everybody here has way too much to do already. Uh, we don't get paid enough. You know, we are underfunded and all that. So, you know, it's to it can seem like adding something new when, in fact, as Amy mm -hmm. said, it's like you just kind of make it part of what you do every day. Right. Yeah. How you it's do your job. Yeah. It's not a new job. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So before we have you guys go, I want to know what people within nonprofits should be doing mm -hmm. to help educate people that are on the outside mm -hmm. and what people on the outside should be should know about helping nonprofits in 20 words or less in, 20 <laughs> words or less. Okay. in 140 characters yeah, yeah. Sure. right count your letters <laughs> right. um, i think you know nonprofits are it, it would really help if they could kind of step out of their daily work and sort of look mm -hmm. at the big picture mm -hmm. and realize that, you know, they can, there's a, a lot of people really are inclined to support them, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really hard to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, it shouldn't be so hard to give a nonprofit money or it's to, yes. uh, <laughs> to uh, you know, provide support in other ways. So, you know, 
and and I think you know just every person just sort of getting in touch with the compassion that mm -hmm. they have the capacity to feel mm -hmm. is I mean and what you, what you guys are doing I think is exactly what makes that happen mm -hmm. thank you and in in in, to, in an audience in a venue that otherwise wouldn't you know mm -hmm. so yeah. Thank exactly. you. Awesome. Well, Thank you and much. somebody else who hopefully we can bring her. Oh, we need to stall a little bit, but um, we're we're also trying to get Beth Cantor on the line oh, to are chat you guys, with us a little bit. Are you guys almost ready with Beth? Almost. Okay. So, she, for people who don't know, Beth is uh, you know one of the most outspoken proponents for using social media for nonprofit fundraising and. Um, I was lucky enough to see her speak at Gnome Dex mm -hmm. a couple years back, and just an amazing uh, fundraising effort there with just the Gnome Dex mm -hmm. uh, yeah. contingent. Yep. There, uh, well, I think you should just ask her all the questions you ask us, because she can yeah. give you way better answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that? She just like she's the go-to person in the nonprofit world. I mean, she compiles all the information that everybody mm -hmm. else has and mm -hmm. distills it and. She definitely it. embodies she the is. ethos of oh. the nonprofit tech scene She's with amazing. sharing and collaborating yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah. uh, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to bring her out to Portland to speak a couple of years ago mm -hmm. for a free event for nonprofits yeah. to help them, um, you know, learn from her. Yeah. And yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, she's great. I so think that that while we're waiting for Beth to come up, I'm going to take a momentary time out to tell you guys. <laughs> I, it looks like Target for tomorrow is starting to pack up, but they have, oh, they're not, oh, no, I'm getting the shaking heads. I saw them hanging T-shirts. <laughs> they have donated for the auction tomorrow five T-shirts, five CDs. You want to bring Ooh. one over, Charlie? Yeah? <laughs> I just saw them hanging up things, and I thought, you know, yeah. hey, we'll bring it over. Cool. Does someone want to bring over a mic? No. <laughs> no. no. You guys can just lean uncomfortably yeah. into Rick. It's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Come on, my Good. <laughs> He's going to be Santa tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thank Renny. We have everybody on staff yeah, here tonight. Yeah, we put everybody into work. Randy right, shows show up. up. Hey, <laughs> get a microphone for us. Thank you so much. Okay. So you guys have brought us some items for our auction. Yeah, I don't know. We set them up over there because I figured a camera hit it, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, we all hand make our cameras. We <laughs> make our cameras. Our camera guy was a <laughs> I got this right there. Um, we all make our shirts ourselves, spray paint, stencils, and whatnot. So each one's actually unique. Awesome. Our CDs, on the other hand, are duplicated, so they're not. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we got five of each. I don't know how these guys are going to give them away, but I think we're going to we're going to um, bundle them together. Yeah. yeah. So if you want a T-shirt and a CD, give us money. <laughs> and uh, I just really, I mean, from us to a band to you guys, like outside of all this, like we really want to thank you for giving us this huge opportunity because we've been following amazing. the. Awesome. I don't know, the viewers thing. Mm -hmm. I've been following it all day to see how many people, and it seems to be consistently around 400. I don't know what it is now, but it's pretty sweet that we just played in front of 400 people. Who knows where they are? So, but yeah, if you uh, if you guys want to check out, we'll, we'll they'll, you'll see them next time we play, which will be I don't know sometime. And uh, but yeah, if we get a, we get a big shrug from backstage there. But <laughs> again. Oh no, it'll make me happy. Yeah. So. And everything that makes me happy is good. Uh, so it's kind of the way it works. Yeah, our here. shirts are all made by us. This is our four track EP. We recorded ourselves using all of our own equipment in garages and yeah. empty cool. nightclubs and all that good stuff. Very cool. Not, not even many, kidding. Not kidding at all. And, uh, That's where the best music gets recorded, and I'm not <laughs> kidding at all. We're really Seriously. proud of this. And uh, those of you who pick this up, we hope you really enjoy it. Those of you who don't get a chance but would like to check it out, it's also available on iTunes. Uh, which was sponsored by PDXFM. We want to give them a big yeah, yeah. the PDX And they're walking thing. out the door right now. Yeah, Bye, guys. guys. You taking off? Um, hey, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. This, st this stuff right here. <laughs> that was a beautiful see, curtsy. Is, this is breaking fourth wall here. They can't see anything of that. Like. Yeah, I like it that way. It makes <laughs> me kind of happy. But yeah, you can check us out online. Just Google Target for tomorrow. And not you can do the number or F-O-R, and you'll find this. And even if you come to our show, you'll probably get some of this stuff for free, because I hand out stuff like a madman. So yeah, but, but definitely donate to a good cause.
Toys for Tots and Free Geek, Free Geek and, and the Oregon Food, food Bank. Bank. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so you did it. I'm going to get off now. All right, All right. bye. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thanks, we'll guys. be back with you in a minute. Awesome. They're staying. Can I cut to them? Oh, we're going to try to go to bed? Good. Okay. okay. Testing, testing. Will we be able to hear her? Yes. He's we will be able to hear her. Wasn't that sweet of the guys to come in with those t-shirts and that CDs? Awesome. That was yeah. awesome. And to play all day. I hope people pay good money for those at the auction tomorrow as well. They should. Because I want one. Yeah. You're not allowed to bid. I'm not allowed to bid? No. You'll be busy doing a show. I want a t-shirt and I'm not allowed to bid. Just Don't saying. Don't quit whining. They're going to give you a t-shirt for free now. Now, well, I'll wear it on uh, Meme PDX. All right, fine. Is the band a startup? Yes, they're a startup. See? They use technology. They record stuff. things. Yeah, there's music and stuff. Oh, uh, you are such a difficult person so to work with. Oh, and I don't, I don't know where we are on fundraising, but before we came on, we were at a thousand. We made it over the thousand yeah. bump. Yes, we were. At now a it should be no problem to get like fifty grand. Yeah, that's the that's the hardest hurdle, and then after <laughs> that, it's all downhill. Do you guys work on that? Yeah. I don't even know where my camera where, is. Camera? Oh. Who oh. am I? Am I Kim? Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. So we got over the $1,000 hurdle, you guys. If we could just do that 50 more times. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would feel that this whole thing was a success. Yeah. Clearly. Are and we, I'm, he's, got the, he's got the Beth Q. Yeah. Maybe. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Hi, Beth. Can you hear us? Beth, can you hear us? Hello. Nope. Okay. Don't have her? Okay. Okay. Back to you guys. <laughs> you what know, would we, we were trying to come up with ideas about how to use the fudge uh-huh. uh, for, for raising money. So yeah. Marie said that if a certain amount could be donated, she would divulge the recipe <gasps> on air. Really? And so, it's a secret recipe. That's so crazy. how much? Handed down through the family. You guys have no idea how amazing that fudge is. Either. It's really, really good. It's good enough that I ate on camera, and yeah. I will get in trouble for that she later. split it across the floor so we can't... I was trying anymore. to share... A, I was trying to share with mm-hmm. someone, and B, I was afraid I would... I know. That's why I was so sad. It was... It. You can't have more on camera. Fine. So that's that. You're like... You're messy, and you'll get your tie dirty. I know. And I, mm. I'm just saying. Okay. You know I'm that's right. Fine. No, I'll be okay. I'm going to ask them later. Don't take a nap, because I will finish that fudge. <laughs> so. OK, so how much money would we have to raise to get Marie to divulge the secret family fudge recipe? Uh, in this hour. Yeah, you in all this win. In this hour. You all win. No, they'd have the to, they would have to give us the money in this hour. It would have to be oh. special Marie you, fudge though. money. Marie fudge money. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was kind we're, of funny. So we're at a thousand. We're at a thousand. I don't, I'm Last not sure. we heard. Can somebody let's look say, at the causes page and let us know say, where we are? Let's say we're at a thousand. Brian's gonna look. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, producer Brian. <laughs> Executive How much is this producer. recipe worth to the family? Yeah. You know, is this well, like a Heinz like yeah. has to go down and <laughs> <laughs> trades? Yeah. It's pretty dang good. No, it's pretty valuable. Yeah, I know. What do you say? If we can get to 2,000 by the end of Strange Love Live? Do you think we can do that? Sure. So that if, we, if we had, we have 1,000, if we could get up to 2,000 by the end okay. of Strange Love Live? I would share it with the entire audience. I mean, I would tweet it. I would okay. Facebook it. Can we put it on the, on the 30 hour day yeah. page? Yeah. Okay. okay. So if you guys can get up to $2,000 on Facebook, uh, causes, on on causes our yeah. on our site. Yep. Just go to the 30hourday.org and just click the donate button. Give us money yeah. and we will post her fudge recipe. And really we all win. Oh. Really happens. The world so, wins with well, the recipe exactly. in open source. So that, <laughs> open sourcing that fudge recipe yeah. can be the best thing <laughs> the that best happened thing to all ever, of us. Ever. It's just a little money. We're just, all winning. You know. It really is the world's best fudge. Yes, it yes. definitely I've is. I've had fudge. I'm a fan of fudge, and that's, <laughs> that's some good, good fudge. fudge. I try not to eat fudge, actually, because I like it a little too much. Mike's running around back there, so I don't. So does anyone know what our money level is currently at? Twelve hundred dollars. All right, nice. So we need eight closer. Woo! It's only eight hundred more. Eight hundred more before Strange Love Live is over. Well, who's who's the cause right now? Uh, Free, Free Geek, Geek is currently the cause. Free Geek is currently the cause. Okay. Right. Well, that's appropriate. That's exactly. right. All perfect. right. Perfect. So Free Geek will continue to be the the cause for okay. the duration of Strange Love Live, cool. and if we can get up. 
So $2,000, fudge recipe for all. Perfect. All right, are we ready for Beth? Beth, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Hey, yay! Hello! Hey, Beth. Can you still hear us? Well, I can see Marie and I can see Amy. It's so nice to see old friends. Hi. <laughs> Where are you calling from? I, I'm in California, in, in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. oh. How's the weather? <laughs> uh, it's 60 degrees. It was 60 degrees today. <laughs> nice. Oh. It was. It was 50 here. And, in London. And Sunday and sunny. Nice. I have, this, I have this urge to yell to talk to you. Hi, I'm Cammie. We've never met. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I know you. <laughs> well, I, I hope that's good. I've heard some not so nice things about myself. But... Maybe that's why we could have get the phone. <laughs> no, it's breaking up. I'm sorry. sorry I'd I just love to talk want to, to talk to her. Could Cammie leave? This? No. So we've been talking about um, social media and uh, nonprofits. And this is something you know a little bit about. Oh, yes, I've been listening to the conversation. I think it's been great. It's great to hear uh, the latest thinking uh, from Amy Sample Ward and all the innovative things she's doing. And, um, <laughs> and also to hear Marie and to hear the story again about Free Geek. So uh, by the way, I kicked in a hundred bucks. Um, I hope it gets matched at least three or four Ooh, times. Nice. You know? Nice. We get that match. We're that much closer to fudge, people. Man. That's all I'm saying. You know, as soon as she said fudge, man, I'd like click <laughs> that my credit card, you know? <laughs> man, what is it? You're giving to a good cause and you get to know how to make the fudge? That's oh, yeah. Win-win all around. Everybody's happy. It's like <laughs> yeah, sure thing. <laughs> so do you have anything to add to the non-fudge portion of the conversation? Well, I guess the thing I've been thinking about, reflecting about over, um, it's funny, I'm hearing an echo, and every time I pause to think, I hear myself, and I want to loop and repeat what I'm saying, but I'll avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, I'm going to take my earplugs out, and um, I'll put them back in when you ask me a question, but I was thinking about this whole thing and how hard it's been um, around social media and nonprofits, and I was out there really early, where I was kind of late, and some people look at me kind of funny and you gotta read funny stuff that works. Are you crazy? What kind of crack are you smoking? Yeah. Uh, we kind of got soldiers on and was able to do a little bit. And the thing that really I, I'm most passionate about is um, finding other people who, you know, are, have the passion, are going out there and doing it, like, like and, or teaching others to do it, like Amy or like Marie doing it, showing uh, their passion for a cause, telling their story, and inspiring others to donate to the thing that they feel um, is passionate about. So I've been thinking a lot about this, and um, so for me these days, it's not so much that I'm like working for a particular cause, but that like I want to urge everybody to be rhizomatic. Yeah, uh, everyone knows what rhizomes are. But okay, so just think about ba a bamboo forest and a bamboo forest, um, there's all these trees in a forest, but they're all connected at the roots. And so if one tree gets a lot of food, it'll pass it along to the others and they won't starve. <laughs> so what I'm hoping to see is that, uh, that the behavior of being generous and wanting to be passionate about a cause and encouraging others to donate for the cause is just spread. Um, Think about, uh, I don't know how many of you are my generation, but I, I grew up with this movie called Fantasia, um, at Walt Disney, and my favorite section of it was um, when uh, was The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Duca, and there's a scene in it where um, uh, he, he, uh, Mickey the Mouse does this magic uh, trick to get the broom to do his work. And so there's this broom carrying all the buckets of water. And all of a sudden, and then Mickey takes a nap. And all of a sudden, he's like almost drowning in all this water. So he goes and he takes an axe and he chops up the broom. And he said, problem solved. And then he goes back to his thing. And all of a sudden, all those little pieces of the broom turn into more rooms. And they're all bringing the water. So this is this idea that I think that all of us, if we um, are passionate about causes, like what you're doing for this 30 hour um, fundraising, you'll inspire others to do it and they'll inspire others, <laughs> kind of networked approach. 
And um, so that's the inspiring part. On the, the flip side of it, we also need to educate nonprofits to be open to this. Um, yes. uh, I, I've been using the term free agent fundraisers. Um, I think uh, that Amy so aptly described as, you know, there, you know, there's people who care about your, what you're doing out there as a nonprofit, and you just need to, you know, say thank you, take them to lunch, pay attention to them, you know, you know, make them feel important. Share your fudge recipe with them. <laughs> Please. And um, so I think, you know, I'm really excited really to see how far button. we've come um, with all of this. And I'm really inspired by seeing you guys sitting there over and doing this telethon. And now I'm going to put my earplugs back in and listen to the echo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bab, thank you so much. That was really, really wonderful. I'm really glad that you were able to join us. I'm sorry it took you so long to took us so long to get you on board, and, and we really, really appreciate it. Well, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Beth. Can we have a big round of applause, a, blah, 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 a big round of <laughs> applause for Beth and Marie and Amy, please? Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I think we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to bring, why don't you guys go ahead and we're going to bring Courtney up. And then, uh, and then I think we'll have a little music, and then we've got another couple guests to join us. Thank you so much. Hello. Hey. Ooh, production chance. Is this anywhere? Here, I'll just clip it to you. <laughs> Whatever. Hello. I'll just shove this anywhere. Works for you. Can we do swears? Yeah, sure. we're allowed to do swears. Don't ask yes. Dr. Normal, but yeah, yeah, you can do swears. Totes do swears. Mm -hmm. As awesome. a matter of fact, I think if you swear, they might give us more money for our fudge. Hey, yeah. Really? <laughs> All we need I'm is just money saying. for the fudge. Just saying. All right, cock. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. This is hundred dollars right there. So. <laughs> Obviously. This is Sorry. Courtney Hammeister. Did I get it right? You totally did. Oh yes. God, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read all of this. I know this, though. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with the fact that she's the host of Livewire. I am that. Which, if you are not familiar with Livewire, I'm very sorry. What? You're not a public radio nerd is your problem. I'm not, a, I'm not even a public radio nerd. And you, you and are familiar. you guys are awesome. Thank you. It doesn't hurt that you had Captain Bog and Salty play. Right. Oh, Lauren Hoskins is he's brilliant. Yes. He's and brilliant. funny even when he's not being a pirate. Um, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, I think he's funnier when, when he's, he's not, not being a pirate. pirate. He's Isn't that true funny. of everyone? <laughs> like, there's pirates kind of aren't funny. It depends on whether you ask my child or not, though. Right. I mean, right. Obviously, if you ask my child, he's the most amazing man on the planet mm -hmm. when he's a pirate. Well, I those, think he's funny. Those kids go insane for that band. Yeah. Totally. And Lauren calls it um, the Fisher Price, my first mosh pit. Yes, he does. And it is, <laughs> an, it is an accurate description of what happens. It's amazing, like the frothing little frenzy of the kids. It's like a little mini like pit. It turns into this whirlpool, and you're like, God, oh, those kids are going to kill each other, but they're so happy. Yeah. 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 We're not joy. Here to talk about Lauren. I remember joy and hope. Oh. <sighs> Kids. <laughs> Cute kids. Too bad what happened to them. Right, exactly. They, they turned into us. Killed them all. Um, we're not here to talk about Lauren, though. We're no, here we're to not. Talk about you. Me. Awesome. <laughs> um, Co-creator and now producer of True Stories. This is this is not having anything to do with, with Roadhouse, though. Um, it's not. Thing. That's not even on the card. It has nothing to do with Roadhouse. Why don't you tell us about the True Stories? Um, True Stories is a memoir series that is. Um, uh, I started with Marc Aceto. He's a, a, a novelist and playwright, and um, it's, it was essentially for me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not what you might call a self-starter, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I have to create external deadlines in order to get things done. Mm -hmm. And and actually. Uh, and some people may not know this, and uh, so we're teaching here tonight. There's a lot um, of teaching going <laughs> but, on. But I'd like to teach you all how to make fudge. Yeah. 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 Sounds which good. is delicious. We would need a recipe Continue, for please, that. Continue, sorry. <laughs> I have a wonderful um, mind. External deadlines uh, are even more effective if there's hundreds of people involved. Mm. Like if you let down hundreds of people instead mm -hmm. of, say, one. Like you well, say, you're going to do a 30-hour telethon just kind of on a whim. Exactly. Because yeah. maybe you... Yeah. Note exactly. Self. Don't do Don't that. Do that. Again. Yeah. No, I think that uh, I think, I think that it's stuck. working out fairly I think well. We're gonna have to do it again. Aside right? from the no sleep uh, yeah. issue, 
So. Didn't really think about that, I, did I, you? I got a little confused with how many hours there were. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's hard to count it's, that high. Math is You're hard. Cute that it way. really is. Yeah, no. it is. I don't know what comes after 23. I wanted a nice round number. 30, right. right? 30 23, 30. It could be. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. My right. watch says right. 15. True stories. <laughs> External deadline, letting down hundreds of people. Right, exactly. So that's kind of why we created True Stories. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's um, it's some hilarious. Well, and Chelsea Kane is one of the stable. We sort of have a stable of True Stories writers, and mm -hmm. Chelsea Kane wrote uh, Heartsick, Evil at Heart, mm -hmm. um, this really screwed up thr thriller series about a female serial killer. And she mm -hmm. is, a lot of people don't know, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, she's written some. Uh, I don't know why I laughed when you said she's hilarious. <laughs> Oh my God, she is! Like, oh my God, she's so she is! Even just mentioning she's right. hilarious is right. hilarious. I mean, she yeah. she she actually one of her story one of my favorite stories of hers begins her like the the first line of the story mentions um, chocolate on a taint, <laughs> like a chocolate perineum, <laughs> like is in that is that that's probably not appropriate. That's like, not the appropriate swear for the fudge recipe. Was, fine. Uh, it was chocolate related. Yeah, the swear was fine, but if anyway. you guys give us money, I'll tell her not to say taint again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Just filthing it up after the Meyer Trust was here. Not good. It makes good. me happy. All right. You're going to read something but before you, you read, and then don't run away, because I want you to tell us about Roadhouse. OK. I Just, will talk about Roadhouse. Well, okay. this is um, uh, this is a piece that uh, I will, I'll probably read on the show tomorrow. In some Sneak form, it, it, may, um, it may change after tonight. So uh, this is the testing ground. So this is the testing this is ground. The if test. we could have this be a workshop, Okay. That would be great for yeah. me. Fantastic. Okay. Feedback on there? Oh, you know what? Yeah. Asking for feedback on the internet is like um, asking to be stabbed multiple times <laughs> in the, the eye. It is. I'm sure they've got it's oh, like when you God, ask me if you have please. any lint on your shirt. I don't even want to look yeah, at it. Yeah, it's not. I don't want to look okay. at it. I'm sure the people are very kind. Rick and I will be quiet. Now you go. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is, uh, we're, we're recording two shows tomorrow night, and one of them will air uh, in the new year. So this is about New Year's resolutions. Uh, <clears throat> so the odds are over. And I think for most of us, this is very good news. Terrorism, war, the slow yanking away of our, civil of our civil liberties. And then there was what I like to call the not so great depression. It's all been pretty chock full of suckage. But now we get a new start with the teens. We can reimagine ourselves as people with rights and maybe somewhere down the road, people with money and you know, homes and possessions and things. And maybe with this new start, it's time to reimagine resolutions. We've all made what seem to be some pretty colossal mistakes. So instead of being about what we're going to do, I think it should be about what we're not going to do, what we're never going to do again. To get you started, I've made a list of my never again, split, it, split out by decades. <clears throat> From the 80s, I will never again become obsessed with a John Travolta film. <laughs> Wearing prairie skirts after Urban Cowboy was one thing, but I refused to gain 60 pounds and wear a hairpiece. <laughs> I will never mix Aquanet with Gina Tay after bath splash again. <laughs> after passing out and hitting my head on the bathtub, I thought Simon Le Bon was speaking to me through a transmitter in my headgear, which was absolutely not true, oddly. <laughs> From the 90s, I will never again date a man who starts the courting process by hiding under the bed in my dorm room. <laughs> it turns out this may be a sign of mental instability. <laughs> I will never again, if given the opportunity to see a Broadway show, choose the one that takes place entirely on roller skates. <laughs> I will never follow another five-year plan that I wrote on a used Arby's napkin that includes <laughs> only two entries, a job would be awesome, and buy condoms. Those two things actually aren't connected in any way, by the way. <clears throat> and then from the aughts, lots of lessons from the aughts, um, I will never again get a tattoo of the Chinese symbol for love without checking with an actual native Chinese person. <laughs> I'm just lucky that not many people know what the Chinese symbol for General Tso's chicken looks like. <laughs> Actually, almost everyone knows what the Chinese symbol for General Tso's chicken looks like, except apparently me. <laughs> I will never get another credit card. That's that's actually not a resolution, it's just what the bank said. <laughs> I will never buy clothes that have been reduced for quick sale. I will never watch Cougar Town. Actually, this reminds me. This is, a, this is just a traditional resolution. I'm going to break from the structure a little bit. I may, if given the opportunity, punch the writers of Cougar Town in the face hard. That's my only traditional one. I will never again date a man who begins the courting process by hiding under my garage. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. As George W. Bush said, I, pro I won't get fooled again. 
In fact, I will never again fall in love with the wrong person, unless they're the right wrong person at the time, because love does that shitty thing of tricking you into thinking you found it when really you've just found someone who's broken in a way that your heart <laughs> finds beautiful. And just one more thing I will do. I'll forgive myself all these colossal, ridiculous mistakes. Ever try to move on from a relationship without forgiving the other person? It doesn't work. So I could hold on to the anger over the whole four-night stand with a Halliburton executive with a foot fetish thing, and I could beat myself up like I'm a Cougar Town writer, or I can let it all go. I can free myself so that I'm ready to make more and more interesting colossal mistakes, just not the same ones. For the love of God, please, not the same ones. A person can only buy so much anti-itch cream and penicillin. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Here's hoping. <laughs> I'm just saying that she and I had a, a conversation in the back hall a little while ago over whether she should read an old piece that was tried and tested, <laughs> or she should read that <laughs> that no one had ever heard. I chose wisely. <laughs> I like that. I'm not going to be able to say the S word on OPB, so. Well, you know? oh, so this is a special boot. Woo! Just shut up! Ooh. Yeah. We yeah. got special content. I know. I'm I know. Saying. This right. is much better. I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about Roadhouse in a moment. But before we do that, we're gonna check in behind the desk back there. Can anyone tell us where we are in our fudge money? Just a moment. Stand by. We're, we're stand standing by. by for what's the fudge money? Standing by so, for fudge. So uh, Marie made amazing fudge, mm -hmm. and it's a secret family recipe. We were at a thousand dollars when we started. If we get up to two thousand before Strange Life is over, she will allow us to publish said family recipe. Wow. For the amazing fudge. That would, that would absolutely be worth it, people. It's fudge, for God's sake. It is, hello, it's, it's you have to try the fudge. <laughs> You're not allergic to nuts, are you? Oh, come okay. on. I love nuts. I'm just making Didn't sure. Didn't you hear my essay? I'm just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. Because it's got nuts, but you've got to try it. So yeah. you'll, oh. I had to push it away for two reasons. I wanted it to look like I was trying to share, but mostly it was because I didn't want him to eat it all. <laughs> Also, I didn't want to eat. It wasn't. It wasn't yeah. you. I was being mean to you, and I am sorry. That's fine. No, that's I, cool. I am really. I would eat it. I would eat it. Oh, only six hundred and eighty dollars <gasps> to fudge. Six hundred and eighty dollars <laughs> to fudge, you guys. This Come is on. awesome. This is easy. That's really that's like exciting. Two bucks from everybody on the stream right now, and we all have fudge. How many people are on we the stream? How do you know that? How do I you know they didn't all it leave? Wet wired into my head. So. Does anyone want to tell us? Who? I don't know. I mean. Oh, oh we've got the minute. finger from producer Brian. Producer Brian's no, doing he's research checking. back there. He's Wonder? doing research. Oh. 150? 150? 150? Okay, yeah, it went down. Awesome. Hey, but Target for tomorrow is going to play. And when they play, it's going to go, way back, go up, way back up. Right? The, the kids go crazy for the Target tomorrow. They love the, they kids love today them. with the music. The kids they with the music. And the dancing <laughs> and such. <laughs> I don't dance. There's a, that was a great dance move. There's people too. dancing. Nice. There's a reason I don't dance. These people can dance. They've got Scott and Megan over there rocking dancing. out. What? Oh, I'm nice. kind of sad that we didn't have a camera pointed at the like total dorkness. Oh boy. Oh. It's okay, they they're my friends. I can call them dorks. Right. You know, they're dorks. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, wow, he's, he's spanking something. There's someone yeah, spanking no, something. They're the best kind of dorks, but yeah. All right, now, you must know that I have an ulterior motive for asking about Roadhouse. You, you do? Because you must realize how special someone in this room is to me. Uh-huh. A special lady are you talking about? A special, special lady. Uh-huh. A special lady who's going to be in, Rose, in Roadhouse? That person? Yeah. Yes. My um, pretty girl. Yeah. I wonder are, if she wants to just come sit down for a second. We don't even have to talk her. about Roadhouse a little come bit. Come sit down, baby. Just for a second. Come on. Wait. Woohoo! What am I doing? Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi. We're talking about your role on Roadhouse. We, let's talk about Roadhouse in general, and then we can, you know, okay. talk specifically about Megan, and I then don't we'll look cut as to pretty the band. as everyone else. You look You're gorgeous. Beautiful. Just be. <laughs> stop being silly. <laughs> she's dressed to take care of Rick and I. That's. She's like in her like serving Make cami and Rick's knee clothing. And <laughs> Thanks, everybody. A little applause from the production Thanks, desk. Thanks, guys. Everyone is pissed at Megan Keep because we keep it. making Megan do mean things on our behalf. For like, <laughs> could you it's go true. and like squash a kitten for us? It's not I true. I didn't. I, didn't I do not want to break up with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rick has 
Yeah, Rick told me to go punch somebody outside yeah, earlier. That's cool. Just you punch him in the well. face. I also told her earlier that she could call anybody an asshole that she wanted to, but that she was the only person who was allowed to call me an asshole. Right, which I did. I took that advantage morning, of that earlier this morning. <laughs> Apparently, it was not being very nice. All right, Roadhouse. Roadhouse? Roadhouse us. Um, Gotta Roadhouse, love that essay. If I'm people sorry. aren't aware of Roadhouse, <laughs> hello. Where have you been? In any way, it's a little sad. <laughs> um, but Roadhouse was a Patrick Swayze film <laughs> in the eighties. Is with uh, a Patrick Sam Swayze Art. film. <laughs> sorry, it with is Sam Elliott, Patrick right? Swayze film. Uh, yes. Yeah, Sam my mom Elliott was also in it. Sam Elliott. Freak. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Set yeah. yeah. a double deuce. Uh, Patrick Swayze plays a bouncer mm -hmm. uh, who can dance. Very we have well. a bouncer. Well, I wonder if our bouncer can dance. Yeah, Joe, you want to play a little Dalton? Yeah. <laughs> he's ignoring he's, us He's now. checking the door. He's doing okay, his bouncer. Like he's it. bouncing. Uh, in any case, uh, mm. Shelly McClendon, who, of The Liberator. The Liberators. Um, who is, uh, and Eastland she Academy. Might, she's probably the funniest woman in Portland. I would argue um, that as well. Yeah. Besides you. Oh, Yo, shut up. I'm just saying. Very Hollywood. I'm just um, saying. <laughs> uh, it, uh, had this idea to do a stage version of it. Mm -hmm. And she actually, she approached the playwright, or she, she approached the screenwriter who essentially was like, oh, yeah, I don't, you don't need to give me any money. I don't really want anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Shelly and I uh, are adapting it. She really, she did a lot of editing to the script, and then she and I are writing some original songs mm -hmm. to go kind of in the scene changes a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and Megan is going to be in it. She's going to be a waitress. Um, sassy of the sassy persuasion. And she's gonna, it's, there's going to be some interactive aspects to it, and Megan is going to help out with that. Are you excited? I am beyond excited. I feel... She's I feel, so excited. I have the most <laughs> ridiculous... I don't know how I ended up with all these gigs. Yeah. What a lucky gal I am. It has a little bit to do with all awesome. What a lucky... Oh, a so lot to do. This is... What has Roadhouse meant to you in your life? Roadhouse... Gosh... There are no words, really. I wish I had a song to express it, but I don't. Sorry, kids. Um, I, Patrick Swayze has meant a lot to me in my life. Um, and Roadhouse, I think, even though everybody loves Dirty Dancing, I think Roadhouse is his best work. I know. I'll be honest. You don't think Ghost? Ro what? No, no. I'm saying Roadhouse is, was his best work. Are you saying that because you're going to be in it? Yeah, dub, double deuce. The and I just, and it was the tai Chi it's also. just so, there's nothing like Roadhouse. So I'm really, really well, excited. That, that is true. There is nothing like there Roadhouse. There is nothing quite like So I could not be more excited to be working with an amazing group of people in Portland to, to be a tiny part of it. What a blessing. And it's <laughs> <laughs> she just turned 80. I don't know so that. good at the but, um, Stop pussyfooting around it. Of, uh, Let's talk about it. It's part We're of Fertile Ground. Here. And uh, yeah, people should go to see as many of those shows as they can because they're all, they were all born here and they're mm -hmm. all people, you know, Portland is just, there's people just doing amazing stuff left and right in this town. So um, yeah, they should go see, I, I don't even, I don't know what the website is, but Fertile Ground is on Twitter. Fertile Ground. Um, mm -hmm. and, at uh, Fertile Ground. Is, I, think um, yeah, I think it's at Fertile Ground. So Google it. Use the Googling. Use right. the Googling. Well, ladies, I'm going to say goodnight to you. Megan, you're not allowed to leave, though. Um, I'm never and leaving. And we're going to head back over to Target for tomorrow one last time. We'll be back, but they will not be. And, and yeah. oh, right. there he is. There's oh, the and there's hey, Doc. Everybody. Courtney, Megan, thank you guys so much. I'm okay. just over here with my friends Target to, for tomorrow, trying to figure out what we're going to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we do that, uh, you know, these guys We're work really camera. hard. It's okay. They work really, really hard for, for something. So I got to gotta show you what they're doing here. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are we ready for this? All right. Because you worked hard for this. And... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, let's, let's try that again. Oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, they've been rehearsing this. They've been waiting to do this all night, right? All right, one more with the leg. All right, all right, all right. Um, let's try the butt. All right. You got one more in you? Possibly. Yeah, we might. Watch for it. All right. Ha! 
Thank you. Elvis has left the building. All right. Um, we're going to let these guys play. We want to show you the beautiful Target handmade, each one different Target for Tomorrow t-shirts. And the beautiful, wonderful Target for Tomorrow CD. You can also get it on iTunes, right? Yeah. All right. All over. These guys are donating CDs and t-shirts for 30-hour day. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming and playing. All right, we got a couple more left for you guys tonight. So, what's next? Here we go. Don't mind me. One, two, one, two, three, four. Gray old man wandering around public lands. Never did a thing as was with cat through my head. He gave me last night a funny glow in his eye. He spoke to me and he told me a story of his life. Listen to what he said. And the shed the man Only wants a man to come from deep inside the head Well, <laughs> more on that later. 
Um, Rennie is uh, here from Wyden and Kennedy, the fabulous Wyden and Kennedy. Oh. Stop. I only say these things because they're Stop. written on my card. Fabulous, wonderful, amazing, fantastic. Yeah, uh, there you go. The hosts <laughs> of the space uh, that we are currently in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, before we go any further, though, I just I'm wondering where we are in the fudge money. Oh, fudge. Where, where are we in the fudge, fudge money. money? Where are we on the fudge money? Let me check. I'm just curious. Oh, I'd like to know. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone Ooh, Bueller? 1350. Bueller? So we learned. We haven't. 50. We've got we, we 30 went bucks. To, oh, $30. I thought yeah. it was 10. Yeah. All right. So apparently people aren't the big fans of fudge. We thought that. It's 650 to fudge. So thank you, producer mm. Brian, for that. Thank you. He gets yeah. that. Producer Brian gets stuff yeah. done. Okay, I hear that you have a question that you would like to ask Rennie. Oh. So I'm just going to sit back here and pretend <laughs> it's not my show. Wow, you've been just Ooh, champing just at the bit, really, under the bus. for a while. Oh, cool. No, no, it says so. No. You want to read? Look, no, what? that's Rick the wrong part. Rick wants to ask It does. No, it Rick does. wants says, to ask a question. It says, works for the fabulous White and Kennedy. These uh -huh. are the which, secrets. Which she covered off very well, by Thank the way, you. Rick. No Thank pressure. You. So what Thank questions you. do I have? And then look, it says right here, uh, Rick <laughs> would like to ask a question. What? I'm only reading. I know. I'm trying to come up with a good one. I could skip. I could By the way, you should stop IMing me. We're only... It's cool. I was trying to feed you something. So, um, he doesn't think you can. As Cammy said, part of the Fair reason enough. we have. <laughs> Fair enough. We have the show, and we've totally torn out the whole production area and all that thing. This is kind is, of an office. Is all thanks to rent. Yeah, this is usually a workspace. <laughs> yeah, a lot but of a lot is, of work. Is pretty much all well. thanks to Rennie. and. Um, I don't know that there's a question there. I just wanted to kind of say, there's the production space. So you can see, hey, production folks. Hey, Hi, hey, this production is normally folks. office -y and desk-y. Yeah, so they're usually desks stuff. and computers yeah. and, and startup-y kind of yeah, things. Yeah, normally we're not on. landing aircraft. No, it's right, really yes. There's, yeah. there's no air traffic <laughs> control <laughs> exactly. going Keep the plane usually. away from, yeah. Uh -huh. But um, but Rennie and, and actually all of Biden and Kennedy have been extremely supportive of this event. And we, we obviously couldn't do it without them. So we wanted to have Rennie on. Um, Mo mostly just out of grudging, begrudging. Sort yes, of, right. He kept yeah. obligation. asking, and he's like, yeah. am I a guest? Yeah, relentlessly. Guest, right? Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, I got this really late right. night uh, Skype I am from yeah, that, that was Cammy, different. can you be? <laughs> no, that was different. Well, that was about the Chris under no. the tree. And, yeah. There's there's several of those, but there was one that was like, Rennie's been bugging me. Awkward. He really yeah. wants to come on the show. Yeah, yeah my husband's yeah, over there man. somewhere. Yeah, it's it's incredibly it's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank why you so much. Why, why <sighs> this mic isn't live? <laughs> no. Yeah. You know he's ignoring the entire yeah, conversation. He doesn't really even yeah. pay attention. He's looking for a uh, for, for good good interchange. He hasn't seen yeah, it yet. No. So it will work it. We'll keep shooting it. So but do you have a question for sure. Rennie or not? Um, Cuz I have ooh, another bullet point. It's ooh. not even a bullet point. I have a star. Okay. okay. So why By the way, I, I just I, I thought it was interesting yeah. earlier that we, I think we've crossed now the Where are we? 7 7 hour and Yeah, we've been on we've the 5 seven minute hours. mark maybe. We yeah. we owe people some letters. I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we're way behind. And I'm just wondering since I, since I wasn't here earlier, mm -hmm. at what point did Rick's tie Get loosened. Was that within the first hour? Was that was five like, hours? Is that sort of a stylistic I'm shaved thing? Too. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's it, wearing it, off though. Yeah, no, sweetie, yeah, you're not. You're out. not shaved anymore. Yeah. No. So I'm just wondering, was the tie? Yeah, no, I think that, he wanted to button it, and yeah. I, I vetoed that. Ah. I said. This is my you know. second wardrobe change. Yeah, you changed wow. your clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Third, if you count the mayor interview, which right. will be viewed at some point. That's some point. So you put underwear on now too? Is that? Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe, um, to we, be unveiled I later. Megan yeah. Kate had it on our Any list money. of things to do. Oh, I said her name and she like looked at me like I was calling her. Um, no, we're no. talking about the fact that you told us we had to wear underwear. Yeah, yeah. it seems like some pretty draconian rules. That she's, yeah, she's, she's a running hardcore. She's hard. hard. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, she like goes in there. She maintains everything. She's like, are you wearing a bra? Do you have underwear? Do you, need, all under do you need chapstick? Yeah. Not and, only, and that's like, just you for have the right And that's underwear. for real. Yeah, yeah. you can imagine. I don't know. Yeah. She puts pins and needles in me. I I'm wish she'd ask me. She's going to hurt me. Yeah. Do, you need, do you need Megan to do something? <laughs> bra on her way. Need some powder? Yeah. Megan, she likes we, to need come a, we need a bra for Rennie. <laughs> yeah, Rennie would like a bra. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. So why don't we just, you know, Rennie gets to do all kinds of cool stuff. Okay. So why don't, why don't you just give us, like, some of the cool things you're working on that we should expect oh. to see that Excellent. you can talk about? Excellent question. Like, you've got that cool little... Nokia sure. thingamajigger little, little, there. Little it's, product placement. Can we got that on? Nokia booklet. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's one of the new If you Nokia. zoom in close, you can see the tasteful 
Nokia logo uh, there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Maybe product placement. Yeah, a little little product he placement. He has the Vanna hand thing down yeah, too. It's very good. I would never oh, stew. Oh, whoa. Do I would need, never stew. You need something to drink? To Ray? product placement. Ready? You want to bring a, me a cherry coke that would be there, garish. Megan? I'm just. Oh, oh, <laughs> trying, trying to escape that. Oh, so refreshing. I'll join him. She's going to bring me something yeah, to drink too. I'm, I'm sorry. Client. So, things that we're working on right now. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I think that we're probably most excited about is, unfortunately, I can't talk about client work. Yeah. Um, but, you know, th just the space that we're in here mm -hmm. right now yeah. and what we've been doing here in Pi, yeah. I think is one of, the, one of the things we're really excited about. Uh, it's okay. Oh. It's okay. Oh, oh. I'm, gosh, I'm thirsty. It's <laughs> mine. <laughs> oh. The cherry Coke the is cheers. always Cammy's. Cheers. Mmm. It's true, though. Taste. It's always mine. <laughs> uh, I get to slap people. It's so, my show. Does it count? Do they have to drink if I hit him? No, it's just me. All it's right. Just when you're here. <laughs> will, will you donate more money if yes. she hits me? <laughs> Keep kidding. Um, and, and I'll do it. The thing for us about this whole experience Ed, was, was the opportunity to do things exactly like this. So, yeah. uh, you know, this, this is one of those things where if I, you, we've turned the camera around a few times, but the um, ability to kind of whip stuff like this together, um, not, not to underestimate the sheer amount of time, effort, <laughs> blood, and sweat that went into actually making it happen, but this is exactly sort of why we're, why we're playing around with this space. So. Yeah, yeah. And I could go into more detail if, if you thought that would be interesting. But, well, you know, you know I, think, I mean, I think... I think it's interesting. Yeah, is there, yeah if there's other stuff mm -hmm. you want to... Is that the okay. interesting cock to the head right there? Okay. Yes. Well, that's Her? interesting. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. So, <laughs> you know the, the feigned interest. Can you, can you, you do the chin thing and I'll, I'll point oh. to my mouth. Oh, ah, wow. Mm. Freeze. <laughs> People will think they're buffering just hung up. And we can... Yeah. Um, <laughs> the stream uh, has stopped. No, I way. think it is interesting. When Rick first told me about what was going on here, I thought it was really, really interesting. We've been down here once before mm -hmm. to talk to Kaviton and Glassby. Mm -hmm. And so... That must have been fun. <laughs> there it was fun. I like those boys. Yep. Ah. Yeah. But uh, so when, when Rick said, hey, have a 30-hour day at Pi. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yes, please. And thank you. Yeah. So yes, please do tell us more. Well, I'll, sincerely. I'll, 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 I'll tell you sincerely sort of the three objectives that we had in, in partnering with the guys, because I, I would first and foremost say it's not about widening Kennedy mm -hmm. um, doing this as much as widening Kennedy looking to try to create an ecosystem where other folks could do stuff. So that, that was kind of the first thing, which was we looked at this as an opportunity to use um, a retail space in a you know in a section of town where there's a few retail spaces available mm -hmm. um, to give companies the opportunity to launch basically as a kind of incubator slash uh, collaboration space so that that was really the notion and it wasn't it very much wasn't about widening Kennedy businesses launching mm -hmm. it was about businesses launching yeah. um, and I think we've expanded that definition a little bit yeah. from businesses launching to actually what we're sort of targeting is more um, disruptions I think that's that's mm, a little more of the objective. Yeah. So if that happens to be a business, great. If it doesn't, wah, wah. Yeah. but it's it's mostly just stuff that makes you go, wow, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, the second thing that we were looking to do was create a way for we, we the when I first got here and I've only been in Portland now for three years, um, I was completely oblivious to the fact that the you know open source kernel and all, all, just all the stuff that was happening. Mm -hmm. Fancy technology. Um, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. um, schmancy. Mm, schmancy. Schmancy. Schmancy even. And schmancy. Yes, mm -hmm. both. We have both um, here. <laughs> and, and what we were looking to do was really create a, uh, we were hoping in, in sort of an ideal scenario that we could give a hub or a connection point mm -hmm. where folks from the space could interact with each other and um, that's been really exciting. Mm -hmm. I think there's been a lot of other groups using the space. We've had the Python group and WareCamp and yep. a um, bunch of other uh, folks in and, and really playing with this space. And I think the third thing that we were looking at doing was the notion that we didn't, I think it was a, a little bit of a challenge for the folks upstairs when they first were trying to wrap their heads around. They were like, wait, so they make digital things <laughs> for us? Like geegaws <laughs> and dilly widgets? And um, it, it, we, we, we sort of got through the notion with them that it wasn't about 
specific products as much as it was about platforms mm -hmm. and creating, um, again, ecosystems, mm -hmm. ways to sort of populate and build new stuff. So th yeah. those were really the three yep. big objectives. Yeah. And is this where that whole, the last line on the card feeds into the whole intersection of humanity and technology? Yeah, yeah, a little like bit. The segue. <laughs> that, is, that's a, that was a very nice segue. Thank you. Uh, cut nice to hook pulling me off to the side. No, um, you can stay for a little yeah. bit longer. Uh, You've got time. We've got 30 uh, hours to go. Yeah, Want to have a slumber party? Last I I'm going to do his makeup. It's going to be awesome. Time. Wow, yeah. That's he puts up with a lot from putting, me. Putting makeup on Rick, that's got to be a satisfying process because you really, <laughs> really, you really feel at the end like you've accomplished something. Don't you? <laughs> That was um, kind of mean. I liked but it. it. That was supposed to be gen gentle. It was. Yeah. It was the gentle kind of mean that I. A gentle mean, exactly. Yeah, Gene. Yeah, yeah. I like him. Mental. Yeah, I know. yeah, keep I him around. You would. Yeah. Uh, so the human technology <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, um, that's been, I think, the, the, what we find to be the most interesting um, intersection is, is trying to figure out ways to give technology a heartbeat, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It does. And, and finding ways. Um, to make this not seem like something out there as much as it can feel like something in here. Mm -hmm. And I, a couple of examples that I can sort of bounce around, one of them that you guys are probably very familiar with is the Baker Tweet thing that the uh, guys from Polk did in London where they hooked up the, basically it was just a little Arduino chipset that they built, a, it put in a feed and ran tweets so that when you pulled the food out of the oven, I'm sure you saw this stuff. For anybody out there <laughs> unaware of what they did, the, the basic notion was, um, yeah, I don't have any good props. Um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you cooked a croissant, you would turn the dial to uh, croissant, hit the button, and the bakery would effectively tweet that there was this you know, new delicious product. It was equivalent of the Krispy Kreme hot now yeah. sort of neon sign. And uh, it, was, Twitter. it was one of those things that like, it, it's wonderful because when you start talking about you know, Arduino chipsets, mm -hmm. it's, it's quick eyes roll back in heads, but when you talk about a hot buttered croissant, people connect with that and mm -hmm. it's sort of that magic when you can find ways to connect with human hearts using technology that simply couldn't have been done before mm -hmm. that things get really interesting and, and disruptive and right. that's where we get excited. Well I think that's part of the fun of the Pi space is that that technology is so accessible now. I mean I think that's a theme that's been running throughout a lot of our discussions is the, the barrier to entry for a lot of technology is a lot lower than it used to be. And you can do a lot of really cool things mm -hmm. with just, without much investment. I mean, there, you, you, you just have access to so much more yeah. these days. Well, you, there, um, I was talking behind the scenes there before while, while they were doing my hair, makeup, and uh, yes, wardrobe. Right. Sure. And, um, you look great. They did a great job. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. We'll keep whoever that was, we'll keep them around. <laughs> they installed an extra two inches of forehead for me. Um, <laughs> But they were talking about how, oh, I, I, it was Kelly who was talking about the Apple IIe and mm -hmm. how she'd used that when she was little. And now you've got a, you know, I've got an N900 in my pocket from Nokia that, that packs more computing power mm -hmm. than, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. no rad used to. And it's, it's, it's the, the barrier is, what, what I think is so interesting is, is the barrier comes down. There's a wonderful thing. Jan Chipchase, who's a cultural anthropologist for Nokia, talks about this band uh, of convenience and alarm with mm -hmm. technology. And it's, if it's over a certain, if, if it's, convenient enough, um, but doesn't raise your alarm hackles, then there's an enormous um, spectrum that you can do. Yep. And as technology just gets easier and easier for you to like literally trip and fall into it, mm. or or becomes a croissant, like once it becomes something you can play with. Yeah, I want a croissant. It, it's <laughs> kind of awesome. Sorry, I can go get you a meat stick. Jeez. There were a few <laughs> back there. That's, that's OK. No, yeah, yeah. thank you, though. I appreciate a dried meat stick, actually, yeah, it looked yeah. like. Take as many as you like. <laughs> <laughs> there seem to be a few left. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Rick, do you have any final thoughts or questions I don't for Rennie? Really, no, no, but again, thank you. I mean, yeah. for all that yes. you've done and thank for you. helping us out with this. I mean, as I said, like, Wine and Canadian has been super supportive of everything down to like the facilities folks, like being mm -hmm. in her beck and call and helping us out. So, I mean, we, we would not be doing this without you guys. And, well, and I got to donate to Free Geek from, from backstage. Oh, nice. Good. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> you right. should do the same. Subtle Because we want that fudge recipe. We need fudge. <laughs> and we're getting close to the end of the things. We've got one more guest and one more song, I believe. Rennie, thank you. Yes, thank you, you may so take much. your mic off, well, but thank you. thank you so much for joining yeah, us. It thanks was for a pleasure. Me. Appreciate it. Whoop. Yes, no, yes, thanks for having you in your space. You're right. <laughs> You're welcome. It's our space. It's a group kind of thing. Excellent. <laughs> it's right. There you go. Nope. 
Go around. Yeah, there you go. Bye bye. There we go. Go around. Someone oh, will help you over nice. there. So I, I needed to do a couple sponsor. You can go ahead and sit. You can sit. You just good. mic yourself. They can't see you right now. They can't now. see here. you. It's secret. Um, it's I need to do secret. a couple of sponsor uh, shout outs. Um, some things. Yeah. Ned, Ned Water doing some. Uh, Keeping us hydrated here, they we were running out of juice or out of water or whatever you want to call it, and they swung back by. Oh to wow! Make sure we had plenty of that. I didn't see that. Yeah. So um, I must and the have been reason, doing something. the only reason we're awake is because of both the water and um, the fact that Blue Hour brought us dinner. Brought us dinner, which was awesome. It was and delicious. And for all of the crew, it was great. Yeah, they didn't just feed Rick and I. They were like, no. okay, we'll feed them all. I mean, it may have all been for us, but we shared it with the other folks. I could have eaten. I could have eaten. I could have eaten another box yeah. of spaghetti. Probably. That's but, good. But, and then uh, St. John's, St. John's Coffee Roasters, who's <laughs> providing the coffee that's actually keeping the crew from dozing off while we're doing our witty. Have you, have you had any coffee? Not yet. No coffee yet. No coffee till tomorrow. That's what I said. Really? Say. Sure. No coffee too. Tomorrow's in like 34 minutes. So we'll see what happens. But that's but again, thank you seriously. Really, again, I need we this couldn't be doing this without our sponsors, and uh, and it's very kind of everybody for all the stuff they've donated. Thank okay, you. Okay, so before we move on, I would also like to know where are we on our fudge money? Quite yeah, see, seriously. it's not looking good. Uh -oh. I'm you guys. Sorry. We're, yeah, he might have something that could it's help. It's pretty that. much stuck at thirteen sixty right now. All right, we've got another guest. No fudge. It's looking like. We've got another guest. <coughs> we're gonna talk with our guest okay. for a few minutes, and then we're gonna have one last song from the guys. Cool. I would like to introduce you all to our guest. This is the locket van, <laughs> as my husband likes to call nice. him, the junk pusher. Yeah. Not like junk as in, as in bad, but junk as in addictive. Thank you. <laughs> this is Scott McCarty. Hey. who is also a sponsor of 30 Hour Day. He's yep. donated some amazing lockets to the auction and also some custom 30 Hour Day lockets. You went, you're wearing it. It's yeah, pretty. Got one. Yeah. Can someone take Can a look a at, wrist, at the wrist thing? here? Anybody? Get that close to anybody? Somebody. We'll get back to it. It's right there. Camera oh, there we there go. go. There we go. Yeah. That is the beautiful 30 That's Hour great. Day the locket. Hello, yes. Scott. Hello, Cammie. <laughs> Hello, nice Cammie. Hey, Rick. hey, you know, I gotta spiff it up a little bit. You look lovely. Thank you, thank you. Goes well with my dress. I know, I, I am, yeah, holy cow. <laughs> thank you, Jeez. Ann Bocci. If that doesn't get, how, many, how much money do you need? I know. What, what is going on. on here, people? It's crazy. Have you what? not seen my dress? Yeah. It's a great dress. Rick so how much are we short? Because six maybe we're 640. 640. So we need six hundred and forty dollars. Yep. We need six hundred and forty dollars in the next fifteen minutes. So we minutes. need the fudge. We recipe. need we need some people to donate some money right now, don't we? Yeah. We need people to so donate six hundred and forty dollars. Right. So we now, need a challenge. Right there. What's the challenge? We already have a challenge, which was that we want the fudge right, recipe. Right, 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 right. But we need a challenge within a challenge. Recipe. So fudge. if we could get, I don't know. There's got to be at least 20 people out there that could donate, what, $50 maybe? That would be great. That would be really, really That would get really us up spooky. there. At least 25. There are 122 people who are There's watching There's 122 the show people right on there right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so one of them is my wife, so she's that's Hi, cool. Miranda. <laughs> and probably the kids. <laughs> Do they have they're their own all on different brands. Well, no, go, I mean, you go, know, go, they're, bump they're up the numbers. going up there. Stuff, I'm thinking, so. I'm hoping, I'm hoping someone put my kid to bed already. All right, if we can, if we can. She doesn't uh, need to see the ship go down. I've got the last $100 if we can uh, Ooh. get there. If you guys We're, can get it up to $1,900. I'll, I'll, I'll finish it. He'll pony the match, up the last $100. But it's, it's, we got to go now. We got to go now. But you've got to get go. it now. Now, 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 now. You can do that. All right. I know Put the you tweets guys out. Do that. I will I'm do gonna that. pull out the card. This is you're not Rennie Gleason. You interview. I'm, I'm gonna make hay. Hi, Rennie. This. You're back so soon. No. <laughs> you're also not Marie. No. I should no, stop no. tucking cards into the chair. This is getting comical. <laughs> Get Rennie, the blue cards. Marie, I'm not um, Courtney either. Uh, Amy. And holy cow, Courtney Hommeister. <laughs> You guys got like all the A-listers here. Oh, oh! I put your card over here. Oh. Check me out. <laughs> Check me out. Okay. Scott's a locket maker. He makes lockets. We kind of covered that. Talk about that. Does lockets, everyone, does everyone Did you know that you had somebody here right? You had somebody here earlier that had a locket on, and it was not a locket to you, locket. 
Who? <laughs> I'm not gonna name any names. Is Everybody's gonna have show? to. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Somebody crazy. sitting right here. Do you have any oh. idea? Somebody sitting right here. No. Do you have any idea how many lockety lockets <laughs> are actually on the premises, though? Yeah, but even the, Robert Wagner was wearing. I know, I know. I got to finally meet him tonight, and uh, <laughs> Fat Boy and uh, Court, and that was yeah. awesome. And he's uh, not fat, you know. He's not. No, no, no. His name is Bobby. Bobby I like to call Fatboy him Bobby. Yeah. Makes me uncomfortable calling him Fat Boy. Yeah. I don't that, like that's it. kind of a yeah. It's a so. thing with me. When I met him, I said, do I have to call you that boy? Because I don't like it. Yeah, no. I didn't no. know at the time that he was like, like not fat. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Like your tiny little Bobby. It's kind of like whenever like they name like the biggest guy in prison, Tiny. Yeah. <laughs> right, Rick? You remember that, right? Right? Okay. So, uh, when I was in prison, that guy was huge. Is that why you're so gentle with me? Yes, that's right. All that. And that's why you eat you're my docile. food. docile. Okay, so there are other things that you're not as well known for. No, I know, yes. Um, for instance? That, yeah. Yeah, the international incident in France. Okay. Oh, we weren't. I oh, promised yeah. Miranda we were not going to talk, talk about, about that. that. Uh, we are, however, going to talk about Power Brunch. Power which, Brunch, yes. Which also happened on Monday, but yeah, <clears throat> somebody may have been a little not. Yeah, present. we had a little. Deep. I wasn't even looking at you. I was. Yeah, was it? I was rolling my it eyes. My I took fault. seven <laughs> phone calls, and I decorated my Christmas tree. Actually, that's not true. I took seven phone calls and put lights on my Christmas. Oh, uh, we don't even have the tree yet. Yeah, my daughter was ready to kill me. Yeah. She really wanted a tree. So. Okay, so tell us about Power Brunch. Power Brunch. Power Brunch is just kind of one of those, uh, another organic thing that just started on Twitter. Of mm -hmm. Like, hey, let's get together. Let's talk. Let's tell each other how great we are and how famous we're going to be someday. And we're we're like, All right, amazing great. and wonderful. That's so, how amazing we are. Yeah, that's, you know, let's manifest this greatness. Mm -hmm. and. The great, the great thing about it is that it's been uh, just an organic thing where we get on there and it's like, hey, you know what? I like what you do. Come to Power Brunch. Let's talk to each other, introduce each other to, you know, and say, yeah. hey, what can we do to uh, help each other out? And um, that's great. We've just had our, I think, our fourth or fifth one, mm -hmm. and uh, it's growing, and uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to get a little bit more organized going into 2010, where we're actually going to have maybe some guests, speakers, <laughs> and wow, go a little crazy. bit more. Yeah. So let me ask you, what was the topic of discussion at this last Power Brunch? Well, this last Power Brunch was a little bit of uh, Not an agenda. A little bit of more of a, an agenda, where we discussed this idea that I have about having the world's biggest, biggest tweet, tweet up, up right here in Portland, 2010, sometime this summer. Don't know exactly when, but we're that's okay because yeah. we're working on it and it's gonna work and we're gonna seriously put Portland on the map as the, you know, basically I wanna showcase Portland as the, base, the best as place. As well you should, yeah. it's and, Portland. And you, social media. You know, the um, Rail Dornfest, who lives Hi, here Rail. in town, mm -hmm. works for Twitter. I do. But we also just found out that Alex, Alex Payne, is moving to who used to be the API guy for Twitter and, and is now doing something else, who, who works with is who works with Rail is going to be moving to Portland as well. I have to say, after so the things we'll he said about Twitter. San Francisco, he's probably safer. Yeah, well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably but. safer moving. So it'll be interesting, <laughs> kind of like we kind of like we've adopted Read Write Web because we have so many Read Write Web. I love the Read Write Webbers. Here. Right. Twitter could be the same way. We could be, it could be a de facto. We've got at least site. one read, read right web guy in the room somewhere. I know. Yeah, we had yeah. him around wandering around somewhere. Around. There's always one. There, you can't They're get everywhere. Rid of them. They're but as, the as more, so, more details will be, we're, we're uh, I'm working with this very special person right mm -hmm. now that uh, uh, definitely helps with the credibility on that and stuff. And she is. Uh, um, given me some really good insight to like behind the scenes like hey this is what we really need to work on and mm -hmm. work for it so we're, we're getting everything together and I'd love to hear everybody uh, follow me at, at lock it to you uh, mm -hmm. give me your suggestions of what you think what you would like to see as far as like here in Portland as far as having people from all over the world coming here to celebrate not only Twitter and social media but Portland in itself because I think we have some of the best people in podcasting Portland should cutting be edge. celebrated yes. And we, and we need to showcase that some more. Awesome. I'm, I'm wondering, Scott, do you want to ask the guys if they're, do you want to ask the producers if they're ready? Are we ready? Oh, we are. We're so okay. so let's go ahead. I'm thinking we didn't get to two grand. 
I don't think we did. Did we did we get there? No, no I don't think All right, so. I mean that's people we'll are let wanting, him check. And actually but... Halodal's asked Nate Angel, who you saw on the Peacock Lane. The Peacock Lane stuff is asking if people can pay via PayPal to donate. Now the the problem with that is that we you can't we don't have a PayPal account where you can mark that off as a charitable donation. You Correct. have to go through causes to have to it be a it, charitable to have donation. It be a charitable donation. Now if you want to just give money and you don't care if it's a charitable donation, I mean it will go to, to charity, to you we just won't get the tax. Yeah, credit. I know okay, we need to we go. Know, we know. We're working on We're, working. we're going, we're going. <laughs> this was important stuff. Okay, so we just wanted to touch on that cuz a lot of people are asking that questions. Now yes. we need to get back over to Target for tomorrow. So uh, let's say good night. To Scott, and Hi. let's say good night and a beautiful, warm thank you. Oh my God, and millions of kisses. We love you guys. Target for tomorrow. You still get your hundred dollars. Oh, nice. Good thank night, you. everybody. Thank you guys so much. Target for tomorrow. You guys rock.
fight for a few new fight for yourself. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>